What's up guys, it's Dan. I'll apologize in advance if the uh, audio quality isn't what I normally have. Uh, I'm on the road and I wanted to make the time uh, to make the videos rather than wait until I got home because I wasn't sure how long I'd be on the road essentially. So, um, so anyway, uh, we kind of last stopped and I told you guys to kind of wait till you know, level 5, level 7 until you get your bearings and you kind of know what you're doing until you start to invest some of your money. So what, what I'm going to show you is some of the mistakes that I first made, and then I want to walk you through what I'd do if I could do it all over again when I was around that level. So essentially what we're looking at, um, what I did is I saw the lowest cost fishing rod that was you know available to me is either a Telestick, which I already had, um, or I'm seeing the spinning rod is 1950. And then, of course, you look at the reel that you can buy, and it's only $9.50. And I'm like, wow, that's that's really good. I should just, you know, pick that up and, and use that. Well, that's all fine and well and good if you decide that you want to go spin fishing. Um, first of all, don't do it till level 7 because Mosquito Lake is not really that good for spin fishing. But in my opinion, um, using spinning tackle is going to take a lot longer to catch the same amount of fish. Um, and it's a lot more interactive than your alternative. So if you save some money and you have about $50, a little bit more hopefully to give you a little bit of uh, breathing room, um, I'm going to take you a different direction. So um, telescoping, I'll have another video that will walk you through um, some of the better ways to float fish, which I think will help you with better hook sets, which shows how profitable and easy it can be. Um, but we're going to start with a different method. So let's say you saved all that money. Um, we're going to do feeder fishing, and that's where we're going to start. So um, at level 5, level 7, however you want to do it, at level 5 you're still in Mosquito, which is fine. Um, level 7, you're going to go to Winding Rivulet. It doesn't really matter. It's just you want to have a little bit more um, money to essentially play with. Now, if you wait till level 7, this is going to be less money. Um, buying the reel and the rod is less expensive at Winding Rent Rivulet. So that's your caveat. You can actually cost money to travel there, but you're going to save more by buying this setup at level 7 when you can go to Winding Rivulet. So that's my advice is wait till level 7 if you can hold out. All right, so on to the rod and kind of what the feeder fishing is. So feeder fishing is a, a little bit easier in that than float fishing or spin fishing is you're going to cast your rod out, you're going to tighten up your drag, and that's about it. The bell's going to ring, you pick it up, and you're already hook set. You just have to wind the fish in. Um, it allows you to kind of, you know, plan your phone, read emails, work, whatever you want to do um, in the background, and then the bell will go off and kind of tell you you can go in and, and set your hook and get your fish. Um, it, it's significantly more consistent from a hook set standpoint, but hook quality still affects um, how long you're going to keep a fish on when it fights. So the trade-off is that feeder fishing gives you the least amount of XP, Spin fishing is a the standard amount of XP, and you get additional XP um, from float fishing. Uh, that's the way they have it broken down in the user guide. Um, so, with it through that going through that overview, here's your recommendation for your first setup. So you're going to purchase the Sorrento, the Express Fishing Sorrento. Um, it, you're really, as you look in through here, what you're concerned with, guys, as you look at rods, is where it says load capacity. That's the heaviest amount um, of line, essentially, that you can put on that rod. And the same for the reel. So the heavier the drag, similar to Fishing Planet, the heavier the fish that you can bring in. So the heavier the load capacity, the heavier the fish that you can bring in. So um, you're going to purchase this one, which is about $37. Um, the Spark is fine for the next few levels. This is going to be more than okay until you get to Old Berg. And even then, you could probably get away with it if you use the right bait. Um, if you look here, the max drag is three kilogram, which is fine. It's about ten bucks. So you're looking at about forty-seven dollars there. Um, from there, um, really, what you, you need to be concerned with is you kind of look at your line capacity here, and it tells you, you know, the line that you want to buy, and that's completely up to you guys. I typically max out to the drag of my reel. There's people who say you can double it. I won't do that because I'm afraid to break my stuff. On some of your lower level stuff, it doesn't matter. But as you get into $100, $200, $300 reels, it takes you a long time to get that money. 
so you want to be careful with it. So I'm not going to recommend that because I think that if that is the case where it works now, it's going to be patched eventually. So as you go through here and you look, um, one of the things you need to be concerned with as you buy your line, make sure you're not buying your braided line. Currently, as every time you toss with a feeder rod, I believe it takes down like point, I want to say 1% or maybe 0.1% from a repair standpoint. So, you know, you're casting a few hundred times in the course of a day, maybe, or maybe not that much, but either way, you're going to take a lot of damage. So stay away from the braided line. So stay away from this stuff as you begin to use and pick and choose when you're going to do braided line. Um, don't pick this on your feeder rods currently. Wait for the patch notes or for some clarification on what's going to happen there. Um, so the, the lowest level line is fine. And, I mean, you can go uh, really, I would say probably between 5 and 7 pounds. Probably 8.5 would even be okay. Um, you know, I try and stay around my max drag somewhere around there. So right around 3 kilograms to so 7 pounds is fine. Um, j just enough to get you started is fine. This 120 meter is good. As you move on to Old Berg, you probably want to move up to um, greater lengths. As you see, this is 100, 100 meter. You want to move into 350 meter because those fish pull a long, 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 long way at Old Berg. But for now, you can go with that to get you going. Uh, you're not going to use a lure. You're not going to use a float, but you are going to use a hook. Uh, hook quality is important in that the longer the fish stays on, um, the, the more likely it is to... I've had one break a hook, and I, I've heard I was one of the according to the group of friends that I fished, was one of the first ones to have that happen. Nobody had heard of it before. So um, you can break a hook if the quality, which you see here, is not high enough. So as you're looking at hooks, be realistic. You're only going to be able to afford a couple bucks, and something might get broken off anyway. So probably somewhere between 3 and um, $7. Uh, I like to use between, like if you're fishing on mosquito, probably between a 14 and no more than a 10 is my personal opinion. Some people tell you to go big or go home. Some people say, well, certain fish are targeted on certain sizes. That may be true, but I, I can't seem to get it to, to have any bit of a difference on the, the specific species. Um, you know, I'm only level 13, so it's tough to say if that's right or not. Um, as far as the sinker, you're going to use the pair of sinkers here, and they're, really you're just concerned about the total weight of what you're putting on your line. See here, number four is probably good enough. Pick that one up, and uh, I would recommend a leader just in case. This 1512 is fine, it's the lowest cost one here, and you're gonna be set up and pretty much ready to go. So, now that you're ready to go, I do want to show you something that may help you down the road. As you look at your inventory and you're setting up your rod, I'll just go to the the bigger rod that I have, um, you can change the type of fishing you're doing. You can see here, this is the pattern oster rig that I have on here. Um, on my other rods, I have basic bottom rig. So you can actually change your rig as you begin to build up um, your skills in these abilities. So you can see the same thing here with you know bait fish with the floating rod. Um, different type of rigs for jerk baits, you know, all, all kinds of different stuff here. So that's one thing you'll be concerned with after you get a little bit higher level. For now, I'll take it over to the water and kind of show you guys a spot um, that I use pretty consistently. Um, there's a few of them I showed you in the last video. We'll go to this one that I think is a little bit better. As you have a feeder rod, there's some little bit bigger fish as you get, you know, to level seven, um, seven plus and you've got some pretty decent setups for this area, you're going to go past the camp, and there will be a pocket of lilies. Now, a couple caveats. Um, you want to be really careful if you're fishing a float rig here. You're probably going to break off almost instantly. This area right in through here, um, if I was to show you, you know, you're like right in through this pocket. I've caught a lot of really big common carp here, and they... I mean, they fight really good. They aren't worth the money in XP to test your gear on it, though. So I'm not recommending that you cast really in this pocket. Um, for now, where I'll, I'll ask you to go is probably going to be like right around in through here. Um, right in through these lilies and kind of in this area here. So 
if you notice what I did is I cast my rod um, I set my reel my rod and reel down um, now one of the things that I want to point out is as you guys are walking around in water like this you're actually going to scare large fish away so that's one thing you want to be concerned with don't set your rod right in the water like I have here it's not the way you want to do it you want to make sure you have it on the bank and try and keep it off an elevated position too that can give you um, if you can try to avoid to have it on a hill if at all possible because it can be um, give you an inconsistent hook set that's especially true with float fishing but all you're gonna do is you're gonna set down your rod using the zero button so I'll cast out this rig just to show you guys just throw this out here just to show you kind of what it looks like alright so you're gonna cast your rod like you always would hit zero to put it down see where it says Y reel in I'm gonna use that and you'll see my drag start to tighten and it winds up your slack really until you get one bounce is enough to know that you have a solid um, set of your uh, your line there um, now depending on the type of fish you're trying to target is going to be the type of bait you're going to use perch are um, pretty consistent with worms especially at a winding rivulet I found I catch a lot of them on worms at winding rivulet maggots are really good here really a lot of different stuff works bread the dough balls um, if you're trying to get your bait harvesting up and you're making some of those baits they work consistently and there's a few different spots, but this is one of the more popular ones. Now, over here is the spot for the common carp, but I wouldn't recommend it until you got a little bit bigger of a reel, just in case. I mean, you can fight them for sure, um, but you're going to be chasing them around the river, or I guess around the lake. So um, you've got your rod set, and you'll see sometimes that you'll get slack in your line. So as you get slack in your line, what that means is there's a fish that's picked up your bait, and it's actually ran towards the shore. That does happen from time to time. And there will also be fish that will pick up your bait and your bell won't go off because of the way that you have it angled. So if it's running parallel, it's, the bell's probably not gonna go off, but that doesn't mean that you have a bite. So uh, sometimes you'll see fish got away and you're like, I don't even know I had a bite. Take a look at the way that your rod's set up. And also take a look at your hooks. So you can see there we got a bite. We're going to pick up our rod, and you basically reel in, and you reel them in, and there you go. We got a bite on another rod. And this isn't uncommon, really, with feeder fishing to get um, bites like that back to back. It's not uncommon. So, well, speaking of that, there's the common carp that I was talking about. Um, they're not worth a ton of XP. They're not worth a ton of money. So if you do get a big common carp and it gives you the bonus XP, go ahead and take advantage of that. Most of the other fish you're going to um, probably keep uh, from a, a cost standpoint that you're going to catch in that spot. Um, so that's it, guys, really. I mean, that's pretty much it. Uh, you know, the there isn't a lot to happen between 5 and 7. You're really trying to get to level 7, so you have access to the new map. Um, one of the things I... I at level seven, you're beginning to look at some of the tools that you can purchase. So let me go back to the workshop and I'll show you the tools that you have available to you and kind of give you my recommendation. So when I first, um, you know, started to do research, everyone's saying, oh, get a net, get a net. You really need a net. You, you need a net in case you get a really big fish and you're going to be frustrated if you don't have one. I didn't catch a fish that really needed a net until I got to level 12, and even then it's very sporadic. But the net is one of the options that people consider almost you need to have as you're, you're moving on to you know, the next lake or bigger, bigger fish as you're trying to catch them. Um, some of your longer fish fights where you can't pull them out of the water, you're going to use a landing net. So. This is something that eventually becomes mandatory. I'm not going to say that it's mandatory between 5 and 7. It's up to you. You, you can definitely get it. Um, the other option you have is going over here to the workshop. Um, you have the shovel. So the shovel is what allows you to bring up, dig up your own bait. Again, if you're going to buy these things, please wait till level 7 because they're less expensive when you go to the winding rivulet. Um, anyway, moving on. So, 
when you talk about the shovel, it allows you to dig up your own bait, which is a good feature and allows you, like you can see my skills, I, I did it pretty consistently through um, through most of my time at Mosquito Lake. You set down two or three feeder rods, and it's a great compliment, comp, compliment rather that gives you something to do while you're waiting on your feeder rods to go off. You can level that skill. You dig up a bunch of worms that if you have premium, you can send to your friends. Um, you'll eventually you'll even get some of these red worms over time, um, which are a premium bait. Uh, so I, you can see there, level 13, I have 128. These night crawlers, I believe, were sent to me. But uh, as as you go in, or as you wait for your bites, rather, that's something that you can do. So I do see value in that as you start to use your feeder fishing. So maybe having one feeder rod, you buy your shovel. You have a float rod, a feeder rod. Then you have your shovel to use, or two feeder rods and a shovel would be a great start. So, so with that, um, I'm going to go ahead and end it here. And uh, the next one, I'll. I'll be working with you guys on will be some of the float fishing. I see people struggle with that. So I'll see you then.